Now comes the real hard part, the supporting cast. Both these films had a gigantic cast of celebrities and all of them were absolutely wonderful. But which one was better? Let's take a look. Talk about Starstruck. Both these movies had a bajillion celebrities in their lineup. Ten Commandments had Edward G. Robinson, Vincent Price, Ann Baxter, John Carradine, and that's just to name a few. Prince of Egypt had Patrick Stewart, Jeff Goldblum, Sandra Bullock, Michelle Pfeiffer. Again, that's just to name a few. So which cast was better? Well, again, they're very different. Prince of Egypt has fewer cast members, but they're given much more development. Miriam and Aaron, for example, are fleshed out much more as Moses' real brother and sister. And Moses' wife, Sephora, is given a lot more screen time as well, having them meet before he actually leaves his crown. Since Ten Commandments is longer, they're allowed to look at even more characters. Like in this version, Moses has a son. We never even saw a son in Prince of Egypt, unless he was somewhere in the back. The slimy servant of Ramesses isn't in Prince of Egypt either, unless you count Steve Martin and Martin Short as the high priest. Ramesses' wife, who's one of the most interesting characters in the movie, is left out of Prince of Egypt too. What's the better payoff then? Is it good to have fewer characters and more development, or the other way around? Well, for the most part, Ten Commandments comes off as stronger because even though they have more characters, they have great actors to portray them. Because of this, the relatively short scenes still get across how sympathetic or unsympathetic they are. The Egyptian that Moses murders is much more satisfying when you see that it's Vincent Price playing him. You instantly see Scumbag, and he doesn't even have to do that much. That's just the power of Vincent Price. You make no outcry, Joshua. But you will. You will cry for the mercy of death. From all humiliation and discomfort. <laughs> the same can be said for Edward G. Robinson. Look how cocky he is in revealing the secret of Moses' past. Even with a sword up to his throat, he has nothing to fear. The Deliverer is Moses. He's Hebrew, the son of slaves. I will pay your price. And like I said, they're not all given small roles. Ramesses' wife is very complex, choosing between the man she loves and the man she marries, only to find her life destroyed by Moses and left with the emptiness of her vengeful husband. Look at this scene. He's about to cut her to ribbons after failing to get Moses until... Before you strike, show me his blood on your sword. Bastard can't even do it. Maybe he's ashamed of his failure, maybe he just figures it's crueler to leave her alive, but he knows that killing her will bring him nothing. Only a bitch so simple and yet so complex can cause such a reaction. And I think that's what makes Ten Commandments stand out more, the harshness. They portray a world that's advanced but also savage, where great monuments are made but death is common and seen all the time. A world that needs a savior like Moses to intervene. We get some of that harshness in Prince of Egypt with Steve Martin and Martin Short, but they seem out of place. It's a little too gimmicky and, for lack of a better word, cartoony. Oh, You're in trouble, Leon young man! Amazon, get down here! My new thing. The Prince of Egypt cast is still sympathetic, but this cast is just so fascinating in how cutthroat they are. They get across a lot with very little, and even though I still love the cast in Prince of Egypt, the cast in Ten Commandments is just darker and more interesting. Point goes to the Ten Commandments. You shame yourself. And now, the big one. The one that I thought I'd never be able to judge. God. I am going to judge God. Balls to the wall, people! This is the best god! So, yeah, I'll admit, it's a little weird comparing gods. I suppose like before, it just sort of depends on your interpretation. Are you a god-fearing fan or a... not god-fearing fan? As far as the story goes, the Ten Commandments God is probably the one most people would think about when hearing it. I mean, this is the God who sent flaming hail, constant darkness, and killed all the firstborns. In short, this was a badass God. So they provided him with a deep, badass voice. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Do this in my name or you will get a cap in your ass. Seriously, you're like a bug. I can just be like... Pfft. 
and you're gone. Don't mess it up. I am badass god. In Prince of Egypt, we get more of the warm, loving god that many people have favored over the past several years. Take the staff in your hand, Moses. With it, you shall do my wonders. In my opinion, the Prince of Egypt god is a little more clever and well thought out. Just look at the burning bush. It looks like something not of this world, but also something that can be soothing and comforting. The one in the Ten Commandments looks more like a cartoon than, well, the actual cartoon. It also makes the clever choice of having the voice of Moses be the voice of God. You can read a lot into that and come up with some fun conclusions as to why. Who are you? I am that I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. The one in Ten Commandments, again, is the deep traditional booming voice that, while impressive, doesn't sound that loving. Honor thy father and thy mother. Like I said, as the story of smoting goes, this god is probably closer to what most people think of. But the soft, kind god is a much more interesting contrast, and you still feel the size and divinity when he appears. I know it comes down to personal preference, but this god simply seems more like the god of love and peace than this one does. Point goes to the Prince of Egypt. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy god in vain. It's all tied up and we come down to the most important element, the story. This is Story for the Win. Now logically you would think that because Ten Commandments is longer it has more time to tell a better complex story. But let's really look at this. Ten Commandments is a complex story with a lot of drama going on, but there's several things they overlooked. For example, it seems to forget that Moses and Ramesses grew up together. That they were technically brothers. I know they're trying to portray Ramesses as the bad seed, but if you were never told that these two were brothers, you probably never would have guessed it. There's no love in their eyes, no memory of the good times that they had. When Moses shows up after years of being gone, Ramesses is just like, whatever, piss off. In Prince of Egypt, the heart of the entire story is around the fact that they're brothers. When Moses arrives, he has no idea how Ramesses is going to react. And he reacts like any brother would. Moses! Where have you been? <laughs> the focus of the story seems to be on their relationship, and it really works. You feel the pain both of them are going through, and how much they wish they could return to what they had. This makes the drama much more interesting. I also like how more visual Prince of Egypt is. I mean, yeah, Ten Commandments looks unbelievable, but Prince of Egypt really used the visuals to its advantage. Not just because it's animated, but because they also do things differently. Like, compare these scenes back to back, where Moses tells his wife about seeing God. The original is done very well, and a lot of it is portrayed just through Charlton Heston's expressions. But in Prince of Egypt, there's no dialogue at all. I like that you have to guess exactly what he's telling her. The music almost tells the story for us and her reaction of taking it all in is just perfect. You really feel the emotion of this scene. There's also some scriptural problems the Prince of Egypt works with, too. Like in Ten Commandments, Moses turns his staff into a snake, but then the high priests do the exact same thing. Isn't the idea in both the Bible and this movie that there's only one God? How did they change those things, then? Is it insta-snake, just add water? In Prince of Egypt, it's a bit more clever. All the tricks that the priests perform are done with smoke and mirrors. There's a blinding light when the staffs are transformed, so you could make the argument that they switch them while nobody could see. Now that's a really clever way out. The songs themselves surprisingly really help to tell the story too. Not only do they move it along, but they also show what the characters are going through, as well as enhance both the joy and suffering that everyone has to deal with. Though I will admit, at times, they do seem a little... sporadic. We've prayed. Dude, all the first points are dead. Can you lay off the show tunes? Don't get me wrong, the expressing of emotions in Ten Commandments is good too, but at times it seems a little soap opera ish. I mean, yeah, this is heavy duty stuff that they're dealing with, but something about the way they hold themselves and speak to one another does seem like a bit much. Forgive me, Pithy. Eh, 
then yes, Prince of Egypt does have this problem sometimes too. There's just some moments that feel really forced. Like the comedy in the first half of the movie, it never really feels that natural. Father will kill me! Don't worry. Nobody will even notice us coming in. Nobody will even notice. <laughs> the best comedic moments were the ones that actually added to the drama. Like the desperation in Goldblum's voice as Aaron while trying to stop his sister from revealing who they really are. You, you must know. Be careful, slave. Oh, my good prince. Um, she's, she's exhausted from the day's work. Uh, not that it was too much. We, we quite enjoyed it, but, but uh, she's confused. But even the bad comedy helps generate the kind of corniness of nostalgia. And let's be honest, nostalgia can be corny. It's a pleasant time you want to return to where everything seems simpler. And this works in Prince of Egypt because they're creating a great contrast to the later drama. The few corny moments in Ten Commandments just come out as corny, and don't really add anything in the long run. The corniness comes from how overdramatic it is, not how funny it's trying to be. Because of this, surprisingly, the animated musical seems to be the more dramatic film. Does it have problems? Sure. Are there elements from the original that are better? Absolutely. But on the whole, Prince of Egypt knew that the focus had to be on the brothers. That's where the drama comes from, and that's where the most interesting conflict takes place. They knew that that was the most fascinating element. That's where people could sympathize the most. It makes us realize why the story is so good. It brings out good characters, from good writing, from a good story. So, it turns out the winner is Prince of Egypt, the superior film. Turn from thy fierce wrath, O Lord. <clears throat> and that's all I got. Thanks for joining me, guys. Nostalgia and critic, this is God. God? Like, like the God? Yes, I heard what you were saying about me being a loving God or a vengeful God. Yeah? You were wrong. I'm a vengeful God. Oh. Your ass is grass. I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. Moses, Moses.